Hello and welcome to the Vector Garden YouTube channel. Have you ever had to deal with these kind of ugly corners? Yes, you had. Everyone had. My name is Monika and in this video we're going to take a look at different methods of how to deal with them. Different methods for different kind of drawings, drawings in the style for documentation and rather freehand drawings that you can apply to brushes and width profiles and the like. Some of them will be destructive and others are editable. So let's first take a look at why these exist. So this consists of three shapes and they have these pointed corners and that's why in this mitre shape of stroke the corner gets that long and when they don't match like in here. So let's take a look at the outline view. You see they are matching exactly the paths, but when you apply the stroke, this makes these ugly corners because they go into different directions. So let's take a look at the stroke panel like so. And you see these have all the mitre join applied and that's why they look like that. So what we could do is, well, make them beveled and then they are not pointy but still ugly. Just a different kind of ugly. That won't work. So select them again. And what about this one? This is round. And you see, this is nice. It's clean but it's also round, which you might not want. But since this will always work, it's often used in drawings in documentation. Uh, in these CID drawings, a lot of strokes meet in, in corners, so this will always work and that's why they use it. Now, what if you really, really want them as a corner? Then you have two options. One of the options is you could draw the outline of that shape. So let's take the pen tool and just go round here, like so. And this one. And let's delete the fill and make this a mitre join and then you have it. So it's kind of a duplicate for this. You see? You also can do this from the beginning. So when drawing this, you start with the outer shape and then inside of it, you draw, well, the lines. So you can go in here and draw all the lines that they meet at the center, like so. They could even be thinner. And you see, this kind of drawing is also often used in documentation. And maybe the outline is used to hide ugly corners. So those are options you can use for this. Now, let's take a look at more freeform drawings like this one here. So we've drawn this kind of freeform, maybe using a stylus on a graphic tablet, and then we've got all of these. Now maybe you want them to end not in a point, but like so. With width profiles, you could still draw a shorter line and then take the width tool and make this one thicker in here, like so. But this can get tedious, so maybe it will still overlap the corners there, so you would need another width point, like so, and then you would need to make them smaller in here, and it's really difficult to get this precise. So you see, there are kind of 
wobbles in there and still there are wobbles there and everywhere so you can go only that far using width profiles and it's even worse with uh, with brushes like calligraphy brushes because you cannot edit them after drawing them you cannot edit them later so what you need to do with this kind of strokes so let's revert this like so so these kind of strokes and also this applies to calligraphy brushes and this applies to the blob brush uh, only for the blob brush it's already expanded and for the width variable width strokes and for also brush strokes you would need to expand them first so what you need to do in order to clean this up is go to object expand appearance then these get converted to shapes so when you go into outline view these are not easily editable anymore so maybe make a copy first before expanding this and then you can take the shape builder tool press the alt key and then get rid of everything you don't want there and clean that up so I can zoom in here and you know delete some more of that so that's this this is now a nice corner still there are more methods and let's apply them to this one these are also two paths with strokes applied and you see this one well it doesn't work when you do it like this and it doesn't work when you do it like that so it really doesn't work so what you can do with that is create your own arrow hat so we've got arrow hats here and I've already created one which is uh, that one and you see you can apply an arrow hat that is pointed in a specific direction so this is the wrong direction let's make it like so and then I could use that to fit this here so what's not working uh, it's really difficult to make a precise arrow head that matches here I could change the alignment and then it works better and then you can fit that as well and that is editable so that's not outlined it's editable now when you let's take a look again at uh, this one here so as for the editing now when you imagine you have to apply fills to a shape like this with all the open paths you would need to take the live paint function and then you could paint this and keep this editable works with this one as well of course so the one that had the extra outline like so then you could edit that as well that would be editable and of course when you have this one which has the edited corner in order to have a more easy way to edit that what you could do is combine all these using pathfinder functions and then it would be easier to handle but if you leave it like so it's probably easier to edit so if you plan to edit that later and if you need to fill stuff like that so then you would need to plan ahead and think about what you need to do let's take a look at the arrow hats now how would you create them in illustrator there's an arrow hat file that contains the list of arrow hats so all the arrow hats that are in here can be edited in an arrow hat file let's take a look at where this is so if you have the illustrator application folder then 
in the Illustrator application folder, there's a folder support files and resources. And in there you go into the language folder that you are using. And there is a file called arrowheads or whatever that is in your language. And this file can be edited. And it looks like so. There's a description of what you have to do in order to edit it. And this is the arrowhead I created. It needs to be saved as a symbol. And when you're done with that, then you can save that file again in the application folder, but not in the support files, but in the plugins. So you keep the original file in the support files and you save yours in the plugins folder. So there's my personal arrowheads file. It's in the plugins folder and that's where Illustrator picks it from and reads it in order to use it in the application. So that's how you can deal with the ugly corners issue. And you see there are different methods depending on how you plan to edit your file. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. See you next time.